Hello and good morning. I hope everybody's having a great day. Today we are talking about baseball and I'm super excited because baseball is one of my favorite sports. As you guys know, my husband is a coach, so I'm around baseball all the time and um, it is one of my favorite sports to not only photograph but also to film. So we're going to talk about a lot of things on where to stand, what your settings are, depending on which um, fielder you're trying to get, where you should stand. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about that in a second. But first, I want to talk about our trivia. Every week we have a trivia question. And this week, it's a baseball trivia question. What MLB shortstop was named the Flying Dutchman? If you have the answer, put it in the comments, and I'll give you the answer at the end of the video. All right, so um, a couple of tips and tricks that I want to make sure that you guys know when you're taking pictures of your baseball team. One, don't forget about the coaches. They're out on the field. They volunteer. Most of them don't get paid. So they're out there working their butt off. And when you have that end of the year highlight video, because I've done a bunch of them, you know, people are always saying, oh, I don't have any pictures of the coaches. And they're trying to rush around and find some. So early in the season, which we're kind of late in the season, but still kind of early in the season this year, make sure you're getting pictures of the coaches so that you can put them in your end of the year video. Also something else that makes really good pictures and video clips, especially to slow down, is when they're doing warm-ups, you know, they're doing the high knees and all this stuff across the field and um, they're taking ground balls and they're acting silly and they're laughing. You get some really good facial expressions before the game during warm-ups. So don't sit around and chit-chat during pre-game. Make sure you're out there taking some pictures because you're going to get some of your favorite ones during that time. All right, so in baseball, oh, well, before I start, I want to talk about this. I hung up behind me one of our banners. Um, just a little quick note, we do banners. Um, I try to make it as easy on the teams as possible. So I'll come to your practice and we actually take the pictures. We'll pull one kid out at a time and we take them and we put all this together in Photoshop. So you don't have to worry about getting the whole team and you know all that. Or you can even have them come to the studio. We pick a day, they pick their time slot and we do it in front of a green screen. We get everybody's pictures and I put it all together in Photoshop as well. So um, banners, if you need one, let me know. I'm happy to help. Um, I don't charge to take that picture. Um, I just charge for the banner. So, hey, Don, I see you. And yes, number six, uh, he's he's awesome. On fire this year, too. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about batting. You know, um, I've taken pictures of batting so many times, and I have so many frames where they either took the pitch or it's a swing and a miss or whatever. There's a little trick that you can watch for when you're taking the picture of your, of your kids. If you're using a DSLR camera, like a, a regular um, camera, you can look for the wrist. Sometimes their wrist will move when they're about to swing. So watch their wrist. Don't watch their body or their hands or any of that because sometimes they may, you know, go into it. But watch their wrist. You'll see their wrist kind of caught back when it's time for them to swing. And that's when you know it's time to take the picture. And, you know, the, the best photo of a batting um, picture is when the bat is actually on the ball. Y'all, that's really, really hard to get. Um, you, if, you're, if you're taking pictures of the same person, like your child, all the time, you can probably time it up pretty good, but you want to push the trigger right before the ball is about to hit. If you do it as the sound is hitting, you're too late. So you need to do it just before the ball hits the bat. That's how you get the bat on ball picture. All right, so where do you stand? That's a great question. If you are um, photographing someone who is a right-hander, you want to be on the first base side because the most important picture is the one where you can see their face. So if you're getting their back and all you can see is the number, that's not the best photo. You want the one from the front where you can see everything. So on the opposite side, if you have a left-handed batter like I do, you want to be on the third base side. Um, let's see. I'm sorry, y'all. My phone's ringing, so let me just... <laughs> all right. Okay, so that's for batting. You want to be on the side that they're facing. So it's just the opposite for pitching, right? So if you have a right-handed pitcher, you want to see the front of their body. As they're turning like this, you know, when they open, you want to see that front side. You don't want their back. So you want to be on the third base side for right-handed pitchers and on the first base side for left-handed pitchers. Pitchers. So um, it's opposite for those two. Just always think you want to see the front side of them. Okay. For fielding, it's going to depend on who you're photographing, right? So if you're photographing a first baseman, a second baseman, a right fielder, or even a center fielder, you want to be on the first base side. If you're photographing third base, um, shortstop, um, left field or center, then you want to be on the third base side. 
a great place to get pictures, not just on the side that I mentioned earlier, whether they're right or left-handed, but also right behind the umpire and the catcher. If you're right behind, the coolest picture, and I'm going to put one in the comments, is I have one of Cannon just from this past weekend where he's pitching, right? So his hand's here, the ball's in the frame, I can see the batter, I can see the umpire. It's really cool, and I can see his face. It's so intense. It's really cool. So don't be afraid to get right behind home plate. Kind of watch the game because sometimes the umpires are up like this. You want to make sure it's one where they're down low so that you can get over their head. Um, and sometimes you can kind of get just right in between the umpire and the batter so you can get that perfect angle. Um, so that's another thing for um, pitchers. And then also if you have a middle infielder, a second baseman, shortstop, first, third, getting right behind home plate, you can get some awesome photos of them scooping up the ball and throwing from across the field. Those are really cool too. So just, you know, don't be afraid to move around the field. Don't stand in the same place, you know, move on around. Um, another thing to think about is getting some dugout pictures. Y'all, those are the best because the kids are all talking smack and, you know, they're doing their little cheers and all that stuff. So get close to the dugout. I always say, you know, if the dugout's here and home plate's over on this side, you want to be on this side, like closest to the outfield because that's where they're coming on and off the field. That's where the coaches are standing. So they're coming in after their home run and they're all excited and that's the way that they're coming in. So just think about the way that they move and where their face is going to be. That's where you want to be. Um, if you have a zoom lens, um, it's really good to get further away and zoom in as much as you can. It does two things. When you're out further and you're zoomed in as far as you can, then the background is going to be blurrier than if you're zoomed out as, you know, as far out as you can. So think about that when you're doing a zoom lens, you want to be able to zoom in as far as you can so that you've got a more blurry background. And also you can get further out on the field. So if you've got an outfielder, a zoom lens is really the only way to go unless you want to walk all the way out to the outfield and get pictures from the side. Okay, um, let's see. For catchers, <clears throat> if you have a catcher, the, the best picture to get for a catcher is as the ball is coming right into the glove and then after it hits the glove when all the dust is everywhere. So like those are kind of the two that I try to get for catchers. And where you want to stand is on the home team side. So like if your kid's catching, you want to be on your side because they're going to look over at the, um, their coaches to get the signs and all that. So you can get some good close-up face shots, and then also you can get when they're catching the ball. So um, just a little tidbit there. Another thing that makes really, really cool baseball pictures is when people are sliding into the base, um, or if they're stealing. You know, anytime they slide and the dust comes up from the ground, those are just so cool. I love all of those. Um, and really in any sport, what you're really trying to do is get the ball in the frame, the eyes in the frame and the story, right? So there's three things. You need to make sure you can see the, the player's eyes. You want the ball in the frame somewhere and you want the story. So if it's them stealing or tagging somebody out, you know, whatever it is, that's the story. And so you want to make sure you're capturing that. Um, a couple other things. I always film my kids at bats because, you know, I have a husband coach and he wants to be able to see the, um, the pitches or the hits or whatever it might be. So when I film, I have this little pop socket on the back of my phone and y'all it is like the best tool during baseball season because you can literally you know the, if you think about the fence it's like a diamond right you can literally sit it in the fence like this and it'll just stay and you just hit record it's awesome so <laughs> before the game before you put your chair somewhere find that perfect spot to film and just slide your camera in there and all you have to do is hit start it's the coolest so get a pop socket this one is from 413 studio 413 girls um, okay, I'm talking fast, I'm sorry. So any questions, please put them in. Donna is watching the chat. Um, oh, I know what I wanted to say. Okay, so for filming, if, if you're a mom and you just want some really cool video of your, your kid batting, then just zoom into the batter or just zoom into the pitcher. But if you have a, a dad or the kid that wants to watch the pitches and the hits and all that, what they wanna see is when the leg raises and all this, and their timing as to when they get set up for the the swing so you want to make sure that you're getting both the pitcher and the batter for those so just make sure um, you know to be far enough away that you can get both and with any of the iPhones I don't know about other phones but with my iPhone I can sit you know just to the side of home plate and put my phone up there and it's gonna get the pitcher and the batter at the same time so um, another thing to note um, oh another thing all right, so I get this all the time when I'm doing videos for sports teams. 
is they'll film straight up and down. Y'all, please don't ever do that. Please, 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 please. I can't say it enough. Do not film up and down. All that's good for is Facebook and Instagram stories. Nothing else. Think about TV. Your TV screen is landscape, right? Your computer screen is landscape. You can turn your phone to landscape and you get so much better pictures. Um, so always turn your phone to the side when you're filming because when you ask me to do that end of the year video and you send me one that's like this, unless it's a, an amazing, amazing, amazing video, it's not going in because I don't like all the black on either side of it. So please, landscape, please, please, begging, please. Okay. All right. That was really fast. So any questions, let me know. We're at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So I am going to answer your trivia question. I haven't seen any comments with the answer, so I'm going to give it to you now. What MLB shortstop was named the Flying Dutchman? His name is um, Hannes Wagner. <laughs> and on this day in 1914, he was the second to get 3,000 hits in a season. Wow, that's amazing. 3,000 hits in one season. Um, and his name is Hannes because it's short for Johannes. Johannes Peter Wagner. And that's your trivia for today. Um, last thing I'm going to mention before we hop off today is... Saturday, we are headed to Orange Beach for Chandler's Baseball Tournament. So we will be down there if you or anybody you know is going to be in town. We are running a special for Family Beach Pictures. Um, you'll get the digitals. We're doing them for $300, which y'all, that's a steal. Um, we'll give you the digitals. It's a great way to, you know, have memories of your family on the beach. And the photos are always amazing. So book now. Don't wait till we get there because they will fill up really fast. Um, also, Sunday, this coming Sunday, is Flag Day, and that commemorates the adoption of the Stars and Stripes as the U.S. flag and the U.S. Army's birthday. So, another little trivia there. And then, last thing I want to mention is on next week's live video, I don't know if you remember, but a couple weeks ago, I did one about Mother's Day with all of these links to different ideas for gifts for Mother's Day. Well, moms, it's Father's Day, and we need to get some gifts for our dads. So, I'm going to do a live video next week from the beach, and we're going to talk about all things Father's Day. We're going to have links to some amazing gifts that you might want to get for them, and I can't wait to share it with you. I'll see you at the baseball field. Have a great one. Bye.